Hi. So I did a video a little while ago to see how the Corsair H60 120mm AIO would cope with the Ryzen 5 3600 overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz all cores. And well, it went quite well to say the least. But this time I'm going to push things a little bit further. So we've got the same setup. So we've got this the Corsair H60 AIO. We've still got the same PC. The only difference is, well, I've purchased the Ryzen 9 3900X. Absolute steal. Got this for a complete and utter bargain, which is why I picked it up. Um, I kind of purchased it on a whim just because it was so cheap. But uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with the performance. But anyway, that aside, what we want to find out is, is, is the 120mm AIO capable of cooling this sufficiently? Because like I said, I did buy this on a whim, so I didn't really take into account the rest of the system, the cooling and the motherboard and everything else. But I'm pretty sure it will cope. Well, at least I hope so. So let's find out if it does. So first things first, let's have a look at my PC. It's a NZXT 210. It's an ITX case and it's not the smallest ITX case, but it is reasonably compact. And as you can see, we have a 140 mil fan at the bottom and above it, we have the H60 AIO. That's got 120 millimeter fan pushing cool air through the radiator. And then I don't know if you can see it there, but we've got 120 mil fan at the top and the back expelling the warm air. So that is the setup. I believe it's got excellent airflow and it should really help to keep the system cool. OK, so for the test, what we're going to do is if I just get onto my PC here, we're going to put Cinebench on. This is Cinebench R20. And then we're going to run hardware info in sensor mode only. And then what you need to do is go into file preferences on Cinebench and change it to 1200 minutes. Now by changing it to 1200 minutes runtime, that is effectively 20 minutes. That will allow you to ascertain if the uh, cooler is able to keep the CPU uh, running at a reasonable temperature. Now the reason why I've chosen 20 minutes is because it takes about 13 minutes for the whole system to equalize, especially the, the AIO. So if we're going to run it for 20 minutes, we're pretty confident that that is going to be the peak temperature that we'll see out of the AIO. So at this point, I suppose we just need to run the test and see what happens. OK, so while the test is currently running, uh, I'll just point out a few things. So the room is currently 22 degrees, so that's kind of ideal uh, living temperature, I would assume, for most people. And the PC itself, uh, the setup is XMP enabled. I have Precision Boost Overdrive enabled. I've also got the voltage offset set to minus 0.1 millivolt. Now I've done some testing. I've been ramping up the offset, the minus offset from 0.05 all the way up to 0.1. And the reason why I've done that is, is up to that point, there was no loss of performance while running Cinebench and other tests that I did. When I went over that offset, performance dipped. Now at that point, you've got no loss of performance, but what you're effectively doing is you're reducing the voltage that goes to the CPU. So that keeps the CPU cooler, and it also helps the VRMs to stay cool as well. So that's my setup, and it's not cheating in any way because that is a real world setup that I use. And if I wasn't using, um, the offset, the temperatures would be a degree or two warmer. So um, it's a very good idea to familiarize yourself with your system and how to get the best out of your system. And if you want to uh, see how to do that offset, let me know in the comments and I'll maybe do a video of that. Okay, so the testing is over. I actually ran it closer to 30 minutes because I 
well, I got involved with other stuff. So longer the better, really. So let's have a look at the results. So the first thing I want to look at is the average effective clock speed when we first start the benchmark. So this is basically when the CPU is cold and we've got 4.1 gigahertz, which is really quite impressive. Now, I wonder where the clock speed will be once the CPU and the 120 mil AIO have equalized in temperature. So after 25 minutes, the average effective clock is 4.06 gigahertz. So we've only lost 40 megahertz, which should indicate that the AIO is actually doing a good job. So now we need to see if that actually is the case. So looking at the CPU temperature, it didn't exceed 76 degrees Celsius, which is, in my opinion, rather impressive. I was kind of expecting the early 80s. So yeah, that's a lot better than I anticipated. The CPU core voltage hovered around 1.2 to 1.21 volts, which is actually pretty darn good. So who knows, maybe in the future I might see if this overclocks to 4.2 or even 4.3 gigahertz on all cores. Hmm, maybe that's another video. And before we have a look at the VRM temperature, we'll have a look at the CPU package power, which hovered around 140 watts. So the motherboard that I'm using is the MSI B450i Gaming Plus AC motherboard. It's an ITX board. It was a really good price and apparently it's got very good VRMs. So let's find out if that is actually the case. So we have a max VRM temperature of 78 degrees Celsius and most of the time it hovered around 77 degrees Celsius. So that's really quite impressive. That actually gives me hope for possibly a good future overclock on this processor. So yeah, overall I'm really chuffed. Okay, so that is the video over. Um, hopefully that's helped someone somewhere out there. If you want to ask any questions or you want me to do another video explaining something else, just let me know in the comments and I shall do my best. Please like and subscribe because that really does help the channel. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.